So Tesla was at the Idean Expo over in Germany recently, and they unveiled one of the coolest prototypes I've ever seen, and I don't know if it's going to make it to production or anything. I'm not sure if this is like a confirmed accessory, but even if it's just a prototype that someone whipped up at Tesla and they're now showing it around at expos and stuff, I think we all need to get super duper hyped about this and let Elon Musk know that this product that, I don't know, some intern at the company may have come up with needs to make it to market. This is going to enable so much, and I'm so excited to talk to you about it today because essentially what they unveiled was a solar trailer that also has a Starlink dishy attached to it. So the FCC actually just approved Starlink to now work on moving vehicles. But more important than that, Elon has actually even talked about having solar wings on the Cybertruck way back when it was first unveiled. This was, in my opinion, one of the coolest unmentioned features that we're not really sure is going to make it to production anyway. But he said that with a solar tonneau cover, they could get around 15 miles of range per day if you were in a sunny location. And with solar wings being able to expand that, you could get closer to 30 or 40 miles of range per day. Again, assuming the truck is parked in a fairly sunny space. Now, I know the first reaction whenever I mention that is, oh, it would take forever. There's a giant battery pack in the truck and you're still going to need to plug in. You know, it's not going to be enough to be worth it. But my argument from the beginning is solar does not need to replace the charge plug. It doesn't need to to replace the supercharger. It's more about supplemental charging than anything. Okay, yeah, you still have to plug it in overnight, and a lot of people may want to pull their Cybertrucks into the garage or whatever, but since the Cybertruck is supposed to be this, like, post-apocalyptic off-road machine, there's likely a lot of people that are going to be camping with it and taking it away from home, and yeah, it probably makes more sense to just put solar panels on your house, but if you're in a scenario where you're far away from home or you're taking your Cybertruck on the go, I mean, Tesla has to be aware of all of these startup companies like Cyberlander that are trying to encourage people to literally start living out of the Cybertruck and just start driving on cross-country road trips all the time. They have to see there's demand for that, and Tesla, of course, is already mass-producing solar panels for their energy business, but being able to embed these into the bed or the vault in some way, shape, or form, I think would provide tremendous advantages, especially with Starlink being there as a backup if you're in situations where you're far away from a cell tower and cellular just isn't going to work for you. The reason I immediately thought of the Cybertruck with this accessory was because, for one, Elon mentioned it before, and in interviews and in podcasts, he's talked about how solar on their typical vehicles, like the Model 3, Model Y, S, and X, doesn't make much sense because it throws off the aerodynamics quite a bit, and there's not that much surface area on those vehicles to accommodate for that many solar panels. I personally still think it's a good idea because, okay, even if solar panels on the roof of a Model 3 or Model Y just just power the infotainment or just power the air conditioning, but they don't actually charge the car, big whoop! You just improved the efficiency of the overall vehicle. Now it costs less money to go the same distance as a car that doesn't have solar panels. So to me, it's more about achieving better efficiency, which I do think actually could help a lot with the Cybertruck. Let me explain. So why has Tesla not built the Cybertruck yet, right? Like we're halfway through 2022. Now they're saying maybe next year, but they haven't even launched the 4680 Model Y on the configurator on the website. Site. They've now started building lots of 2170 Model Ys because 4680 production is going so slowly. Couple that with the extreme success and the high demand for the F-150 Lightning and the Rivian R1T, both of which are just building 300 mile range options. In fact, depending on which trim you get, a lot of those trucks don't even make it to 300 mile range. So Tesla likely is going to prioritize production ramp above high range. So that's why I've said for a while that I don't think the Cybertruck will go much further than a little bit over 300 miles because that's just going to require so many dang 4680 batteries and they're going to need twice as many cells as the Model Y to get it to 300. But you might be able to improve the efficiency of this very large vehicle, which I'm sure, you know, with the rear wheel steering, the quad motor powertrain, the exoskeleton, it's likely not going to have great efficiency compared to something like a Model X or a Model S. But where your aerodynamics are taking a big hit because of the side view mirrors and the overall large nature of the vehicle, you have an advantage of a larger surface area, especially over that vault, and perhaps even over the roof section of the Cybertruck, you have a very wide, very flat square area to put down solar cells because obviously you can't pull out the wings on the road. I'm not advocating that they leave this solar trailer open as you're driving down the freeway. That would be terrible, but for the sections of the truck, like the bed that don't have to be completely closed when in motion, the solar tonneau cover that may be what this thing converts into could be there and could be active as you're driving the Cybertruck around. So, 
again, this is not going to charge the vehicle. I'm not saying that your battery percentage will increase as you're driving down the freeway because solar panels can't harness energy that quickly and the Cybertruck is just going to consume so much energy on the road. But using that large a surface area just for reducing the amount of energy consumed could prolong the range and potentially, since the Cybertruck is likely going to be super duper expensive considering they know how high demand is for this vehicle and regardless of how much it costs them to build, Tesla is comfortable raising prices on things that they know people are willing to pay for. That's why, keep in mind, when they refreshed the Model S and X with the yoke and everything, they said those cost less to build than the Raven upgrades and despite that, they raised the price by tens of thousands of dollars. Heck now, even the cheapest base Model X, which has less motors and less complexity than the Cybertruck does with all of its rear wheel steering, air compressor, armored glass, the vault and everything, and the Cybertruck's gonna have twice the number of motors as that base Model X, that's starting at $121,000, and that's with a pre-existing assembly line, which Tesla had for several years before they refreshed the Model X. The Cybertruck is starting from nothing, needing new interior components, new designs, new manufacturing methods like the exoskeleton and the armored glass and the air compressor, which they've never done before. So because there's so much demand for it, there's literally more reservations for the Cybertruck than any other EV in the past. I think Tesla is going to be comfortable charging a lot, which means perhaps this is where a lot of the speculation is coming in on my end. They might feel more comfortable offering solar or building solar into the Cybertruck as a standard option because it's really not going to cost them that much more if you're already charging over a hundred grand for the Cybertruck anyway. And if the solar panels allow for better efficiency, that could mean that Tesla is able to use less batteries to achieve the same range as other electric trucks. So F-150 Lightning, the Rivian R1T, they use over 130 kilowatt hours to get over 300 miles of range. If the Cybertruck, with its improved aerodynamics, with its improved efficiency, the structural battery pack, and the mass of the vehicle being pushed to the outside with the exoskeleton, and couple that with a big old giant solar panel over the bed, that's how you might be able to get like a 120 kilowatt hour battery pack to get you over 300 miles miles of range, or maybe even less than that, which helps with the manufacturing ramp. It requires less batteries so they can build more trucks quicker, not to mention it provides a tremendous advantage over their competitors because the Cybertruck will cost less to operate because it's using less energy. So I know that's a stretch, but I'm just getting really hyped and really excited because we now have evidence and proof that Tesla is actually actively developing solar range extenders with wings and everything. It's kind of reigniting that concept that Elon originally tweeted about way back in 2019 of them wanting to make the Cybertruck close to self-powered. No, not entirely off-grid. I'm sure on road trips you'll still need to supercharge and if you're just taking it home, it's probably going to be much more efficient and easier to just pull it into a garage and plug it in and charge it from the solar panels on the house. But come on, the Cybertruck is way more durable and way bigger than all of the other vehicles Tesla's built. There's probably going to be a bunch of people not parking this truck in their garages anyway. They're going to leave it outside. They're going to leave it in the sun because they're not worried about the steel aging and because it's a pickup truck. It's meant to get dirty. It's meant to go off-road and take quite a bit more of a beating than all of their other vehicles. Not to mention all of the more recent Cybertruck prototypes we've seen, you know, the road legal ones that have the big old windshield wiper and the side view mirrors. None of those we've seen the vault cover on. You know, they showcased that vault on the original prototype, but a lot of people were likely thinking, I don't know how you're gonna keep that thing working reliably. Like Rivian has already had a lot of customers tonneau covers break on them. And if you're worried about rocks and dirt and sand and debris getting caught in that vault cover, it could be more problematic. Also the kilowatts, when they spoke to Tesla employees at the Cyber Rodeo, they said the employees were talking about there being a mid gate. So an option to fold down that second row and access the cab from the bed. It may be way harder to do that with the old-fashioned vault we saw on the original prototype, but maybe if they go with a more traditional vault that just kind of folds upward, that doesn't roll up, and perhaps that this new updated tonneau cover can have solar panels on it, which improves the aerodynamics of the truck while also harnessing more energy, and of course when you're parked or and at your campground or whatever, it should be easy based on the pictures we've seen. It has little handles that you can grab, and you can just manually unfold the solar panels. They can just have basic locks. They don't have to be motorized. Those would break easier and they would get dust and rocks built into them if they added more complexity like that. So just making it something that someone can unfold and set up themselves so they can get, you know, 30 to 40 miles of range per day where they are, I think would give the Cybertruck tremendous advantages over its competitors and absolutely could not add too much to the overall cost because I feel comfortable saying the Cybertruck is going to cost over $100,000 anyway, simply because of how high the demand is and how low the supply is. And Tesla is charging over $100,000 
$1,000 for the Model S, which has substantially less features and less functionality than the Cybertruck does, and a smaller battery pack with less motors. So some people looking at this solar range extender prototype have estimated that the cells may be around 1,500 watts, which is pretty good, and that could power your camping kitchen and your camping accessories and that kind of thing. And depending on the time of day, you know, if the sun is on one side of this truck, then being able to fold that cover higher and extend it a bit more might make the solar panels more efficient. Whereas, you know, if the sun is behind the Cybertruck, you can kind of leave your bed closed and hopefully there's still a way to access your cargo even with the solar panels all extended and whatnot. But the main reason I think this technology would be perfect for the Cybertruck is because, you know, Tesla's already manufacturing the Model 3, Y, S, and X right now. And those do not have an easy way for you to charge the vehicle as it's in motion, right? Like aside from regenerative braking, the only way you can charge those cars is through the charge port. And right now, you can't really charge the battery through the charge port while the vehicle is in motion. The vehicle is smart enough to know, hey, you shouldn't be rolling around if you've got something plugged in there. And even if they found some way to plug into the charge ports through a trailer that your Model Y or X is towing behind, the solar would cause quite amount of aerodynamic drag to the point that I don't think it would be worth towing around that often, especially given the location of the charge port on most Teslas. That would cause quite a bit of drag on the aerodynamics too. So I don't think this accessory or this trailer would make too much sense to tow around with a traditional Tesla, but implementing this solar wing setup on the Cybertruck, because it's a new vehicle and they haven't started mass producing it yet, embedding a way for the truck to give power to the battery pack as it's in motion might be a lot more possible here because of the size of the pickup and how much efficiency is going to matter with a big heavy truck like this. So I know that requires a lot of speculation, even if it's not just for the Cybertruck, just the concept of having Starlink and free energy from the sun that you can take around with you is incredible and I want to shine a light on this solar package, no pun intended, because if it gets a ton of attention and a lot of people are interested in it, I think that increases the likelihood that Tesla will want to make it and bring it to market. So what do you guys think of this solar range extender? How much would you be willing to pay for one? Would you want to add solar panels to your existing Tesla? Do you think the Cybertruck should have solar in it by default? All that good stuff, let me know what you're thinking down below and thanks to everyone on Patreon supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton as does just watching these videos. So thanks again and have an excellent rest of your day.